Capital One. Welcome to Southern California. And inside Pauley Pavilion, a trip to the Sweet 16 is on the line today. The seven seed Creighton Blue Jays, one of the Big East best, face the two seed, the UCLA Bruins, 15 and one in this building this year. So here's how things have shaken out in this Albany two regional. UCLA out muscled the 15 seed, California Baptist just before that. Creighton hit 15 threes, scored 87 points, and they blew past UNLV. So these two meet in the round of 32 with the former Penn Quaker, Kim Adams, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. So this UCLA team came and turned in one of its better regular seasons in recent program history. They were powered all year by their all-conference force on the inside. That's Lauren Betts. She was out on Saturday with the right foot injury, making her tournament debut with this team today. Yes, yeah, certainly a huge boost for the Bruins at six foot seven having their leading scorer and rebounder back in the lineup they got a big lift from charisma Osborne and Kiki Rice in the first round but you mentioned it this Creighton team can shoot the lights out the most threes they've ever made in an NCAA tournament game in the first round 15 on 44 percent shooting from deep it was impressive so they scored nearly 90 in that round of 64 win against UNLV there's Betts number 51 in the white her partner this year, Kiki Rice, was excellent, as you mentioned, the 20-point game in that first-round victory over CBU. Away we go inside Pauley Pavilion. UCLA, they earned the right, of course, to host the first two games of this pod. And they play in a building where they're 15-1 on the year. So Lauren Betts, by the way, with the first look on that side for the Bruins, left that shot short. So here is the Creighton starting five for Jim Flannery. This is brought to you by Capital One. The all-senior starting five, and they do a whole bunch of that. They'll cut and screen you to death. Emma Ronsick with the first basket. And that's a great start for her. Emma Ronsick was scoreless in the first half against UNLV and then erupted for 23 second-half points. So she gets going a little earlier. There's Lauren Betts. Six foot seven, the sophomore has truly blossomed this year in her first season in Westwood. So this is Corey Close's starting five. Again, Betts was out on Saturday with the right foot injury. And Close had mentioned she was optimistic she was going to be ready to go, at least for this one in the round of 32. This unit, of course, brought to you by Capital One. What changes now with the six foot seven bets in the lineup? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty obvious on paper. They just, they get a lot taller. It changes how Creighton is going to have to defend them completely, and it gives them a huge anchor in the paints, but they don't need it on that offensive possession as Creighton starts just off like they did in the first round. Oh, or Jensen. Oh, yeah, we were trying to warn you. <laughs> Jensen, by the way, went for 25, hit five triples. Those 25 for Jensen, number 15 in the powder blue. The most for a, a Creighton player ever in this tournament, at least since 1999. There's a foul on that drive inside. That's the first on Molly Mogensen. There's Jim Flannery. He spent all but two of the last 41 years at that university. Player, assistant, now head coach. Kibbe's coached nearly 700 games as the Creighton head man. We've got a tie up in the backcourt there. Good effort by both Osborne and Jensen on the floor to force the tie up. Ball back to the Bruins. Corey Close, meanwhile, has guided this, this team now to seven of the last eight tournaments. And you see they've been to four Sweet 16s recently. They're trying to go to another one. Now this UCLA team so battle tested eight top 25 wins over the season. That's the most in the NCAA this year. Won 13 games in the gauntlet that was the Pac-12. After the miss from long range, UCLA the other way. This is Rice, their dynamic sophomore point guard. Into the paint now, po uh, best. That is a deep post catch. So that that could be problematic potentially all evening long for the Blue Jays, a smaller team. That time it was Mallory Break caught behind six seven more in best. Mallory Break just six feet tall. Thomas player on the floor for CU is just six one. That's it. This is Break. 
Couple of dribbles, shovels it right back to Jensen. Jensen free for a moment, and buries another. That's two for Lauren Jensen. And you cannot lose, really, Lauren Jensen, Morgan Molly, most of the Creighton players on the three-point line. You cannot allow that much time and space, especially for someone who went five of seven in the first round win. Creighton, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the nation. They make nine a game. Charisma Oz, that triple short. Jensen on the move. Ronsick driving, kick back out to Morganson. He's been the engine for this 26-win Blue Jay team. They've been firmly in the upper echelon of the Big East now for years. This is their third straight women's championship appearance. That's a record. Brave looking for the cutter into the paint herself, fires it up. Rebound down to Osborne. Remember, she had 15 of those in the win against CBU. And that's a defensive possession that UCLA loves, keeping it in the hands of Mallory Brake. Really the non-offensive threat, but quite the offensive threat on the other end for Creighton. Their focus is trying to push Lauren Betts out, get her touches beyond the block. That has not been the case on the past two possessions down the floor. Yeah, Ronsick has had her hands full, so Betts has six. Three of three from the floor to start, and all three touches right underneath the basket. There's a foul on UCLA. At six foot seven, you, you simply can't allow Lauren Betts to get this deep of a post up. Emma Ronsick, just six foot one, just a simple catch and turn. So for Creighton, that's going to be a, a problem all evening if they don't find a way to push her up the line a little bit, force her to catch the ball a little bit closer to the mid post or even the elbow area. Well, it, it's been clearly evident why the field goal percentage is fourth in the nation. 15 a game this year, nine rebounds a game, couple of blocks a night for Betts, who last year only played about 10 minutes a game at Stanford, hit the portal, transferred, and has totally blossomed here at UCLA. Lena Sontag takes her place momentarily. It's Creighton, though, in front. Just started in Westwood. Third ever meeting between these two. There's Morgan Molly. Missed that one wide left, and Gabriela Jaquez secures the board. Here's Osborne. Osborne lost it. The veteran on the floor. Jensen rips it away. Haran inside the run sick. That's an off balance fadeaway. Nicely done. And a nice attack from Creighton with Lauren Betts on the bench, catching a breather. So a much smaller UCLA lineup. They forced some switches, and Emma Ronsick had a guard on her. Nice little fadeaway. And a round of 64, outside of a clunky first 15 minutes, UCLA out muscled the 15 seed CBU. Scored 84, and a big run late in the second quarter propelled them to a win. Late shot clock offense. Did Cameron Brown get it off in time? Safe A show. One of our officials says shot clock violation. So they wipe the basket away, and we take a timeout with Creighton ahead by four. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Listen, you pick up a win in the first round of this tournament. Coach Flannery, the grace, the, the grace post game in the locker room. We don't care about each other now. You know when to lift her up. Okay, and she knows when to lift you up. Okay, and that's what you gotta have tonight, right? Embrace the difficult, okay? Embrace the stress. That's a great team you're playing for, okay? But that's what makes it more worthwhile when we come in here in two hours. Okay, let's go. Hell yeah, let's go. She's yeah. number one to Wilkins. Let's go home. Great access pregame inside the Creighton locker room is they're trying to march on to just their second Sweet 16 ever. They did that two years ago. Remember, they knocked out Iowa and Caitlin Clark in this round and ultimately reached the Elite Eight that year.
and with got... a lot of the same players, right? They Absol did it a few years ago. Yeah, they've been in this position, but how about how about the moves from Coach Flannery? Got to <laughs> shout him out for the effort there. I'm not sure if if the rhythm is all the way there, but he gave it his all. Yeah, effort, <laughs> hard work. There's a turnover, by the way. Good defense that time by UCLA. Rice now attacks the basket and draws the foul. So Kiki Rice is going back to a place where she lived on Saturday. It's the free throw line. And this is what UCLA wants to do, push in transition. So far, no one has scored outside of Lauren Beth. She's on the bench catching a breather, but Kiki Rice so good at getting downhill, attacking, and you're right, nine for nine from the line in that first round win. She's the sophomore from right outside of Washington, D.C., such a dynamic player. And Boy, based on what we just saw there, it seems like that's exactly what her head coach wants from her today, stay in attack mode. Yeah, be the aggressor, something we heard Corey Close mention at shoot-around today to her whole team. And she said for all 40 minutes, she said even in shoot-around, be aggressive in every single thing we do. And that was quite an aggressive take from Kiki. Ronsick has already hit a couple on the baseline. Rebound to Hawkes. Jensen went for the steal. Osborne the spin. Osborne out to Rice. Wants it. Yeah. Ooh, that looked pure from Kiki Rice. We mentioned she's probably at her best right now going downhill, but she's certainly getting more comfortable from distance. She's got a really nice pull-up jumper, and that time showing the range. She has been the engine all year for this 26-win UCLA team. Oh, count the basket. Jensen going to the line. Jensen with a fine and fast start. She's got 10. And that's the pick your poison when you're defending Creighton. Lauren Jensen has already splashed a couple of threes in this game. So you really overplay her. And she's able to cut back door, curl around. Molly Mogensen, by the way, on the assist. She had a career high nine assists in the first meeting. So if you cut hard, Molly Mogensen is going to find you. Lauren Jensen has been one of the premier scorers in the Big East for now several years. Sixth in the league, averaging about 17 and a half points per game. So she has been a prolific scorer at the top of scouting reports for a while now. Very creative shot taker. So 11 for Jensen already on the heels of the 25 point game. Betts all oh, just muscles her way in, couldn't get it to go. The offensive board of the stick back. Lauren Betts now up to eight points, and, and again, just letting her catch it right beneath the rim. Creighton's going to have to find a way to push her up the line. She's going to make that nine times out of ten. Foul on Hawkes there. The size advantage is just immense here. Yeah, 6-7 over 6-1. You could see Morgan Molly was starting to try to dig down a little bit, but came a little bit too late. And then you get her to miss the shot, but she's able to just overpower everyone and grab the O board. So 13 up late in the first quarter. Mogensen looking for somebody. This is Molly has the smaller Jones on her, so that time Creighton exploits the matchup. And that's a mismatch that Creighton worked on in shoot around today, trying to seek that out. Putting London Jones in a switch situation, knowing that UCLA switches just about everything. So they get Morgan Molly, who has a great inside outside package, posting up on the block. Molly's somebody who goes for 15 a game. Osborne watches that one rattle in and out. And you can see why UCLA is one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the nation very quickly in this matchup. Yeah, UCLA number one in the nation in terms of rebounding margin. They out-rebound their opponents by about 14 per game. You, you can't jump with Lauren Betts. You have to get a body into her. Ronsick working hard. Betts double team back out to Hawkes. Sets the feet. That one's down and out. Rice got a hand on it. So now it's a third look on this trip down the floor. That's another. Too easy. She had the backside seal. Really nice looking and angle from Gabriela Jaquez on the assist across the court. So they get a couple of offensive boards on that one trip down the floor. That's in the double figures now on five of seven shooting. A trip to the Sweet 16 on the line today in Westwood. 
That turnover gives it back to the Bruins. And this is just so difficult to guard when UCLA overloads one side so that there's really no help coming from the backside. And again, a perfect feed in from Jaquez. Nice steal from Laura Betts. So now Molly trying to body with her in the paint. Catches it about six feet away. Turns, goes over the left shoulder. Jaquez another board, puts it up. She's fouled. That's now four offensive rebounds for UCLA. It's the first foul on Molly. Hawkins has free throws. And a defensive possession does not end with a missed shot attempt. A defensive possession ends with a successful box out and rebound. And right now, Creighton is not doing that. That time they actually pushed Lauren Betts out a little bit. That was one of her worst misses of the day. But then they allow Hawkins to just fly in for the second chance. Look at what Hawkins did in the first round. The versatile do everything warrior yeah, with Betts out. Out goes for 19 and 7. So this uh, Wednesday night's star-studded ESPN NBA doubleheader. It features the Clippers taking on the Sixers at 7:30 Eastern, followed by the Nuggets and Suns. Coverage tips with NBA countdown at 7. Molly launches high. Arker, she splashes it. Morgan Molly, the lefty sniper. She gets in a zone when she is just ready to catch and shoot like that zero hesitation. She can be dangerous when she gets hot. This is now London Jones on um, a step back, down and out. And that's a foul on Betts. That time goes over Molly's back. First foul on the sophomore Lauren Betts. And I think it goes without saying if, if you could get Lauren Betts into foul trouble. That is certainly to your advantage if you could be physical with her on a post up and get her to come over the back like that a couple times. And it's now in the bonus for UCLA. So Creighton will take two free throws. Two foul, uh, two free throws, pardon, on that fifth foul at each quarter. Morgan Molly is. The most reliable free throw shooter on this team, the senior from Crete, Nebraska, 91% at the line this year. You're going to hear me say senior quite a bit. It's the all senior starting five for Creighton, and many of them have been playing together for three, four years, which is unprecedented. Jones wants three. Left that one short. Tip back out to Osborne. Just that long reach on the interior by UCLA, extending possessions. Betts, close range, yes. And that's what happens when you don't defensive rebounds. That is priority number one right now for Creighton in terms of adjustments needed, securing the first defensive rebound. Now, Creighton had trouble with Desi Ray Young, UNLV's in, in, interior threat on Saturday. And the good news was they hit 15-3, so UNLV was playing from behind for the entirety of that game. and. Goes without saying, a similar quality shooting night would be of help for Creighton today. About a four and a half second differential between shot and game clock. Betts couldn't get it to her, so that's a turnover. Eight seconds here for Creighton. Jensen in a rush. Jensen on the pull up, left it short. Two seconds, now one. First quarter in the books. It's the Blue Jays with a one-point lead after 10 minutes. Uh, for the Bruins, Lauren Betts back in the lineup, and she is hot. 12 points already for six foot seven Lauren Betts. All right, so it's time for tonight's Need to Know. It's brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. These two have met in this tournament once before. Six years ago in this very round in this building. UCLA powered by Jordan Canada. It was a first round draft pick a couple of months later after these two met. They blew out Creighton in a game that was never particularly close. UCLA won by 22 and not only marched on to the Sweet 16 that year, ultimately reached the Elite Eight. And look who's back in the building for this one. Love that. Jordan Canada doing her thing in the WNBA. One of the all-time great point guards for UCLA in the Pac-12. 
12. Part of those NCAA tournament runs that we have talked about with UCLA. Great to see her back supporting the program. So do these numbers, by the way, for Canada not to sum up the way she'll be, she was remembered here. 21 points, eight assists, five steals as well in that game. The two-time Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. So UCLA has won both meetings in this series. Corey Close's team trying to stay in the moment, earn the right to just play one more. That's been her mantra. Let's just keep earning the right to play one more game in this tournament. Yeah, Corey Close was candid, though, in her post-game presser the other night when someone asked about Creighton. She said, as soon as that bracket came out, I could say, if we ended up facing each other, this is going to be a, a troubling team. So, so far, Creighton, a, a really good first quarter, despite them not being able to stop Lauren Betts. UCLA, just quite simply, one of the better teams in America this year. Finished second in the Pac-12. Reached the semis of that tournament, won eight games against ranked opponents. Jensen tosses that one up, and Betts pulls down another rebound. So that's five boards to go along with the dozen that Betts has on this end of the floor. And that was really well defended by London Jones, just sticking in front of Lauren Jensen. That three is offline and off of Dugalich's fingertips and out of bounds. So ball back to Creighton. You bring up a fine point, though. So you look at these two teams, two seed, seven seed. Judging by the final AP poll that was released, this is a top 25 battle, if that means anything to anyone. Creighton has been a team inside the top 25 for much of the year. UCLA never fell any further than 12th in the nation. Yeah, Creighton had a surprising semifinal exit to Georgetown in the Big East tournament, but prior to that, they had only had two losses since mid-December, both of those to the UConn Huskies. Oh, Molly, great cut in the vision from Ronsick. It's 20-20 for the bucket. That's where this team can burn you. They are always moving, always screening, always cutting. Jones's three is offline. UCLA now just one of six from beyond the arc. A little shaky from beyond the arc to get Things going Saturday as well. And so far, the defensive rebounding has picked up for Creighton out of the timeout at the mid-quarter break. Lead feed to the leech. Knocked out by Jensen, so good recognition to get her hands on it. Creighton offense has been on points. Can't really see it develop there, but Morgan Molly coming over from the weak side. And how about... Emma Ronsick is the center, uh, out on the perimeter, perfectly delivering that fireball of a pass. That was a laser, and she secures another rebound. Ronsick, versatile inside-out threat, senior from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Going a little point center right now, bringing the ball up. So you're saying just watch the motion, watch the cutting and the screening, yeah? Yeah, you just, you have to pressure UCLA so much to know if they're going to switch. If they're not, they attack these screens. Lauren Jensen talked about her three-point shooting prowess, but she's got the full package of skills. She can have that mid-range. She can get to the rack. An excellent free-throw shooter. She's a problem. Jensen in some sort of a groove this week at Westwood. Rice went one way, Dugalich threw it the other, and there's another giveaway. It's now five turnovers for the Bruins. And we'll keep an eye on how they respond to this. We've talked with Corey Close throughout the last couple days. She is fixated on how her team responds out of a play like that. Their next play speed, I yeah. think they call it. It's analytics they measure. They try to get a stop after a turnover. Creighton shooting very efficiently on this end of the floor. Mogensen not going to have too many more open looks tonight. That's certainly not the response. Corey Close going right to the bench after somebody neglected to stop the ball. We talk about the big three with Creighton, but Molly Mogensen can be just as potent of a scorer. The Blue Jays on an 11-2 run. Rice can't answer from deep, and Horan, who just came in off the bench a few moments ago, gets tied up underneath. The possession arrow does favor Creighton, though. UCLA had five offensive rebounds in the first quarter through three minutes. They don't have a single one here. I'd imagine that was a focus in Jim Flannery's huddle. Much more attentive to boxing out and attacking that rebound. 
So you just saw Cameron Brown come in, Lauren Betts. Again, the 6-7 all-conference star back on the floor. Trying to harass Ronsick here. That's pretty. Timeout UCLA. And Creighton takes a nine-point lead after a 13-2 run. So let's check out how Creighton is fueling the run. It's brought to you by Wendy's. This trio of Jensen, Molly, and Ronson. They're the only trio of players on one team in America that all average 15 or more per game. And you can see that tonight. That top number is what they've done today compared to what the rest of the team has averaged this year points per game wise. Yeah, these three are serious. Emma Ronsick right there. And they all do a little something different. First of all, they can all shoot the three. Emma Ronsick is really the force on the interior. We've seen her take it right to the forwards. Lauren Jensen, she can shoot the three or really break you down off the dribble. And then Morgan Molly, we've seen it, has the ability at 6-1 to take it into the post. I mean, that is a lot to try to defend and handle, especially with the way that Creighton is constantly moving and screening. Well, and that action has fueled a 13-2 Creighton run. And so the Blue Jays have a nine-point lead in Westwood. And a big adjustment here. They're now really fully doubling Lauren Betts, but Kiki Rice finds a way to exploit that and sneak inside. But that possession, they had a defender on the front and the back of Lauren Betts with her efficiency. Ron Sick, oh. four, three. That's what we talk about. So that time, you're, you're forcing Lauren Betts at 6'7 to pull herself all the way out to the three-point line where she probably would rather not be. And Emma Ronsick sticks it. It's a double-digit lead for the seven seed in the Albany Two Regional. Ronsick now with seven. Creighton has hit four triples. Osborne trying to answer. That's pure. And UCLA is going to need more of that to really space out the floor because right now they have not shot the ball well from the perimeter. So that's allowing Creighton to send two or three at Lauren Betts, who's been the only player to really hurt them up until this point. Yeah, Kim, that's UCLA's just their second triple. That's it. Creighton has been ultra of, uh, efficient on this end of the floor. Though the Blue Jays shuffled uh, Kennedy Towns at that time, shuffled her feet, so that's a turnover. Corey Close has talked about her team's responses out of timeouts. So far, a pretty good response in terms of defensive intensity, getting after it on the offensive glass again. And in her postgame presser, she said, something I'm challenging my team is to make these adjustments on their own in-game, not forcing me to have to deal with it in a timeout. Osborne blows by Brake that time, but she's whistled for the foul. So that's the first on Mallory Brake. And the UCLA guards have to stay aggressive because Osborne and Rice, they have a, a foot speed advantage, an explosion advantage in a lot of these matchups against the Creighton guards, as we saw there. Betts barges into Molly, that bounces out, and the jump hook won't go. You see UCLA fully playing off of Mallory Brake, who's not really an offensive threat. They're keeping a, a permanent helper in the lane instead of guarding her. Jensen left the pull up short. Hawkes on the move. No numbers, though, for UCLA. Past the midway mark in the second. Osborne, or Betts, a pass inside to Betts, and she got it to go again. UCLA has to just keep forcing that in anytime it's single coverage. Emma Ronsick, the center, has now knocked down multiple threes. She's into double figures now with 10. Hawkes underneath. Hawkes turns, spins, comes down with the rebound. And that'll stay here after the Creighton foul. We know that all of these Creighton Blue Jays can knock down a three. The one, the two, the three, the four. Emma Ronsick, the five, splashes it. She's up to 10 points. Creighton up over UCLA. Hose just sleep.
Well, Kevin Creighton with an eight-point lead here. Early in this game, they were getting absolutely buried in the paint by Lauren Betts. They were doing one-on-one -on -one single coverage. They have adjusted their defense. You see here, there's really two double-teaming her, but a third and a fourth defender really tightly staying in, attached to Lauren Betts, even as the ball moves around. UCLA has not demonstrated an ability to knock down from the perimeter yet in this game, just two of nine from three. So that's allowing Creighton to keep three or four players, almost like a magnet around Lauren Betts. And that's why it's crucial that UCLA gets some success from the perimeter, even if they're attacking out of the closeout. Got to keep that ball moving to try to attack the Creighton guards once they're trying to scramble out of that double, triple, or quadruple team inside. Well, where does that production need to come from then outside of Betts? Yeah, I mean, Kiki Rice, Charisma Osborne, those two have to stay aggressive. And right now, London Jones not in the game, but she is their best threat from three-point land. They really would love to get her going a little bit. We're past the midway mark in the second quarter. It's been an entertaining first half. Creighton has been ultra efficient shooting the basketball, better than 59% from the floor. UCLA still trying to settle into a groove. Osborne launches, and Mogensen comes down with another rebound. So that's what Creighton is looking for them to do. Emma Look Ross. how quickly that one <laughs> developed. So they get out in transition, and Ronson makes it happen again. Now she has 12. So she's buried a couple of threes, and then that time just runs rim to rim and able to shoot it over Laura Betts. Oh, look who's open. Cameron Brown on the backside there. Nice find by the sophomore. And that's how you attack out of the double team. You keep moving, moving without the ball, screening for each other, and you make Creighton pay for the defensive decisions they're going to make. This is Keani Lockett. Feeds it inside. Molly, the turnaround. That's still free. Mogensen tips it to herself. And so a new 20 for the Blue Jays. Mogensen flashes. There's Jensen now on the attack. Off the window. That's down. Lauren Jensen has displayed a nice array of shot making in this first half. And that drive comes off of ball movement, unselfish, extra passes from Creighton and allows Lauren Betts to attack a closeout. So they're now 60% from the floor. There's a foul away from the ball, and it's a 10-point Creighton lead. Remember, coming up at halftime, we'll have Dove in the studio. UConn marching on earlier today against Syracuse. Another Wolfpack team reaches the Sweet 16. So on the men's and women's tournament, NC State, one of the final 16 standing. And after the Brown miss, you know, Creighton, you keep highlighting this, their work on the defensive glass. Night and day from the opening minutes of the game. There's now an intention of boxing out and attacking. That's the first foul on Osborne. Just the second team foul on UCLA. The Blue Jays earlier this quarter built a double-digit lead, so they have maintained this 9, 10, 11 point cushion. They are fully confident, and we've talked about the veteran play. These are, for the most part, four or five seniors on the floor at a time. They're not afraid. They're not going to back down. They're going to stay in tune with the way they know how to play. It's been impressive. Top 20 offense. They average close to 80 points per game this year. Ronson fires. Left it short. And then a foul on the loose ball. That's on Sontok. So Creighton keeps it. And now UCLA, the top rebounding team in the country in terms of margin. They're getting a little undisciplined on the boards. They look Maybe a half a step slow. Mogensen for three. That's short. And Jones, fresh off the bench, now looking to push. London Jones with her eyes up. Osborne feeds Hawkes. Hawkes was a huge spark in the opening round win. She hasn't really been able to get much offense going. Hawkes 0 of 3 from the field to start. Osborne looking. Hawkins on the attack, underneath the reverse. 
They need that. I, I think Gabriela Jaquez is a big matchup problem in this game because of her length and speed. Oh, the transition attack again. And it's Kiani Lockett who lays it up and in. Just no let up for Creighton right now. Give up a bucket. They quickly inbound up the floor. They catch UCLA sleeping. The Blue Jays in a rhythmic groove right now with a 10-point lead. Jaquez, the catch, puts it up. That's good. So back-to-back -back baskets for the sophomore from Camarillo, California. Now, Jaquez had 19 when she started in place of Lauren Betts in the first round win. Good to see her get going. She can bring some electricity. That's an offensive foul. They get Lockett for the illegal screen. And so UCLA takes over now with 51 seconds to go. So Lockett trying to get an explanation. Doesn't like it. Meanwhile, Ronsick takes a seat for the defensive possession. Great comes back on the floor. Osborne's gonna, Osborne gonna get a little extra work in here. Hey, if the, if the broom person isn't gonna clean it up, Charisma Osborne taking matters into her own hands. I don't even see, where is that person? We don't have the broom. Are they off the clock right now? This is, this is the second round of the NCAA. That's tournament time. A trip to the Sweet 16 on the line today in Westwood. And Creighton has maintained a lead for much of this quarter. After the Rice miss, Molly draws the foul on Rice. So that's the second on UCLA's sophomore point guard. Well defended by Mallory Brake, six foot senior who Jim Flannery considers his best defender. Kiki Rice, there's not many people who can keep her in front, but Mallory Brake at six foot stays with her and stays vertical discipline without fouling. Lauren Betts was the story of that first quarter. Remember, returning from a right foot injury that sidelined her on Saturday, she had 12 points in that first quarter. However, it's been Creighton's effective shooting, particularly from deep in the second quarter, that has allowed him to build, at times, a double-digit lead. 25 seconds to go, Jensen trying to take the forward off the bounce. The turnaround falls through. Jensen with 17 already had a season average in the first. Exactly that, just identifying a mismatch, taking a big off the bounce. Shot clock off, eight seconds. Brown rolls the layup, that's good. Four seconds now, Loganson to Townsend at the horn and hits the rim. Regardless, Creighton takes an eight point lead into halftime. Trying to get back to the Sweet 16, a place they were two years ago. You are watching the NCAA Women's Championship. It's presented by Capital One. Back inside Pauley Pavilion in Westwood, where the seven seed, the Creighton Blue Jays, have an eight-point lead over the two seed. That's the UCLA Bruins, who are 15 and one in this building this year. It was an entertaining first half with Kim Adams, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. So Creighton at times held a double-digit lead. They shot 59% from the floor. How did they do it the first half? Well, they're obviously incredibly efficient. 13 assists, just four turnovers. And it hasn't been all about the three ball like we saw in the first game. They have just five threes. They're getting a nice balance of inside and out. And of course, they have one of the best trios in America. That's Lauren Jensen. She's been on the three-point line. She's been attacking Morgan Molly, exploiting the mismatch, showing her prowess on the interior. And then Emma Rodzik, she's hit a couple threes. She's run rim to rim. The three of them, Kevin, have combined for 38 of Creighton's 42 first half points. It's incredible. You know it's coming from that trio, though it's just still so hard to defend. Jim Flannery talked about that all week. Hey, we're a, we're a tough scout if you have a short amount of time to plan for us. So Lauren Betts at the bottom there, she finished with 14 points, 12 of which in that first quarter. Look at the final note. Creighton unbeaten this year when leading at the half. 
interesting note. And, and we know this is a Creighton team that has been in this position before. Just two years ago, same situation, second round on the road at a sold-out Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City, and they took down Iowa in advance to the program's first ever Elite Eight. And it's a lot of the same players on the floor. So they are comfortable with this moment. Knocked out Caitlin Clark a couple of years ago. Can they do it again today? The turnovers were problematic for UCLA in that first half. There's Mallory Brake's first basket of the night. So UCLA has to be extremely crisp in their offense right now. Down 10, the Creighton team very comfortable playing with the lead. Everything has to be on point and, and minimizing the turnovers. UCLA in the first at 42% from the floor. A lot of that production came from Betts. That time, Brake and Molly affecting the shot at the rim and watched it roll off. Shits in, a quick trigger, left it short. And let's see if Rice can get going as well. Dugalich on the attack, lay off with the layup, and Betts is fouled. So Lauren Betts headed to the free throw line for the first time today. Betts with 14 and six boards. And a quick sub for Corey Close, less than a minute into the game, getting Gabriela Jaquez maybe a little bit more size, maybe not happy with something that happened with London Jones. Betts just 62% at the line this year. She has been the dominant force, the all-conference post player, also landed on the all-defensive team this year in the Pac-12. Offensive board gives Rice another look at the rim, couldn't finish with the left hand. Great help defense from Emma Ronson because Kiki Rice blew by the front line. A trip to the Sweet 16 on the line today in Westwood. We've already seen one two seed go down. Yesterday, that was Ohio State, lost to Duke. There's a foul on that screening action. And it's another on Charisma Osborne. That's her second. There you go, a couple of Lower-seeded teams have advanced in the second round. The most notable, no doubt, was the seven-seed Duke defeating Ohio State and Columbus yesterday. The two other examples were five seeds over fours. Pretty evenly matched games. Hoganson finds Jensen. Jaquez with the board and a tie-up. Mallory Blake comes flying in to force the jump ball. Possession arrow favors Creighton. Bruins fan wanted a, a foul. I'd have to see it again before I make a judgment, but it, this Creighton team is just staying aggressive. Mallory Brake not going to back down. Jensen off the screen. Jensen left it short. Dugalich wants it. That's a big three. There's a jump ball. Possession arrow favors the Bruins. And so this pavilion comes to life for the first time in a while. Charisma Osborne, two-time All-Pac-12 defensive team. Fifth-year senior. Sometimes a little bit of a light starts going on when you recognize this could be my final college game. She's making the effort on the defensive end. Dugalich from the same spot. It's a bit too strong that time. Osborne trying to chase it down. Boganson, though, has it. A little backcourt pressure from UCLA. And Jensen quickly rushes it across the timeline. It's a seven-point game now early in the third. And when we talked to Corey Close about the main focuses with them, pressure was the number one important word in, in terms of pressuring this Creighton team, making them feel uncomfortable. But more than Molly, man, she, she continues to look real comfortable out there. She's got that higher archer now into double figures for a nine straight game. Doodle each looking for Betts. Offensive foul. They say she hooked Molly that time with the left arm. Livid, marching down the sideline. Let's take another 
look at it. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's a clear hook. Yeah. Clear, not even a question, the official on the back side. I mean, if they don't call that, that is a, a big miss for them. Correct call. Corey Close didn't have a good angle from her vantage point of that backside hook. Yeah, I'm with you, partner. Jensen trying to wreak some havoc. Betts throws it up. Rebound down to Rice. Rice with seven points, just two of six shooting from the floor. Dumps it in, Betts turns, got it with the left. She's staying aggressive, and Creighton has gone back, really, the, to start this second half to just a single coverage on Betts right now, which is something they did in that UNLV game once they had the lead against Desi Ray Young. They kind of let her get 30. These UCLA guards, they were hounding both Jensen and Mogensen that time. And so Mogensen and Osborne, they trade a couple of, looks like for some, maybe some friendly fire, if you will. Melissa Barlow came running in. That's just a couple of veterans, perhaps. Yeah, no, nothing ill intention there. Just a little chirping. Official had a quick speed, though. She was in there. She was breaking <laughs> yeah, it up. 40 time. First step. <laughs> Third foul, though, on Osborne. So that becomes <laughs> notable. Those two, they have battled for much of the day, Osborne and Mogensen. So Osborne has to take a seat. To your point, this is a double-figure scorer. Just the rock, the foundation for this program, as Corey Close likes to say. Yeah, we'll see how long Coach Close leads her out. I don't know if, if she would go the full court, this full third quarter out if Creighton maintains or extends their lead. So Brown, the fifth-year senior on the floor, she's guarding Molly. Molly trying to go to work. Off balance, fade away, rebound to Betts. UCLA in a hurry, trying to push. Rice picks it up. Jaquez. Near turnover, fumbles to Jaquez, throws it up, that's it. has to stay aggressive. She's probably been the toughest matchup so far when she has hunted her shots and been aggressive going to the rim. Jensen the blow by. The floater. Jaquez pulls down the board. That's now nine rebounds for Jaquez to Rice in attack mode. Gets fouled. And Kiki Rice as heading back to the free throw line as this place starts to erupt again. Oh yeah, this building has gotten quite loud across the last couple of possessions. Charisma Osborne having to take a seat with three fouls. The stellar sophomore, Kiki Rice, keeping her foot on the gas. She should really have the advantage at breaking down the defense every time she's got to stay aggressive. The two-year starter runs the offense for UCLA. So remember, this is now four straight years. Every NCAA Women's Championship game, it's on our ESPN family of networks. For more info, go to NCAA.com. It's your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Who is going to be in Cleveland for the final four? April 5th and 7th. UCLA has never been there. Can they do it this year? Back within three after a 9-2 run. A couple of jam steps. Betts plays off of her. Rice knocked it away. Haran on the floor. Another tie up. That should favor Creighton. So the Blue Jays keep it here. This is typically a time where you'd, you'd probably see a coach call a timeout. The, the media is approaching, but this is a veteran group. Jim Flannery trusting his group to play through this a little bit to get to the under five timeout. Remember, shot clock doesn't reset, so Creighton has seven seconds to work with. 5.17 to go in the third. Dugalich just got whistled there for the warning. You can't lean, of course, over the sideline to affect the inbound pass. You got to stay vertical and straight up. Molly 
going to work on Brown. Goes up with the left. That's good. Morgan Molly with another impressive bucket. Tough bucket. Big time bucket to silence this crowd a little bit. Who's, who's taking a seat after getting really involved in this game. Brown, out of perimeter threat, hands off to Rice. Rice, the step back three, puts it in. And UCLA back within two. Jensen, the off-balance runner, that's there. A nice response of the Blue Jays. They have responded a couple of times in the midst of this UCLA torrid run. Well, that is just smooth and steady from Lauren Jensen. Difficult shot there, well contested by Kiki Rice. Rice going back to the line after the foul on Haran. So Creighton's double-digit lead down to four. The UCLA Bruins storming back. The crowd is in this one. Key, Key Rice cashing out. So let's take a look at tonight's star stories brought to you by Honda for the Blue Jays. It's the big three and for the Bruins, it's Betts. Yeah, the big three certainly living up to the hype. Everybody 13 or more and Lauren Betts has really been incredibly efficient when they've been able to find her eight of 13 from the floor. I'll have my own star. Kiki Rice here has yeah. picked things up when Charisma Osborne, the veteran, the fifth year guard, had to go to the bench with fifth fouls. Kiki Rice has really dialed up the intensity here to fuel this run for the Bruins. I think we can add the right in. It's, it's appropriate. Well, Rice is now going back to the line. At times when UCLA has needed somebody to step up, Rice has answered the call. She is good at slashing to the paint, good driver. The sophomore from outside of D.C., remember the number two rated recruit in the class of 2022, McDonald's All-American, co-MVP as well, and decided to take her talents to UCLA. Molly misfires from deep, and so UCLA, which hasn't led since late in the first quarter, has a chance, maybe with a three to do so here. Bitch, meanwhile, ties it up. And that started with a big defensive rebound for Gabriela Hawkins, who now has 10 rebounds in under 20 minutes of play. UCLA outscoring Creighton 16 to 8 this quarter. Jensen fouled by Brown, got a little too aggressive there. 14 foul on UCLA. UCLA needs to stay intentional, intentional about trying to keep Lauren Betts active, reading how Creighton's defending her. That time a little bit of a double team, but at six foot seven, as long as she's able to make the catch within a couple feet of the rim, more than likely she's gonna finish over the top. She's gonna take a little bit of a breather here. Sontag gives her a blow. Sontag trying to knock away the inbound pass. Loganson back to Jensen. Couple of jab steps, starts to dribble. Brown cut her off. Brown trying to hound her this time. Now with seven to shoot, Mogensen improvises. Mogensen from 15, missed everything. Here comes UCLA with a chance to take a lead. This is Rice, got it! Timeout Creighton, and the Bruins have come back from 10 down to retake a lead. The sophomore, Kiki Rice, will not be denied. Kiki Rice, right to the rack. UCLA is taking the lead. Let's look at today's game track. It's brought to you by Invesco QQQ. UCLA has erased the eight-point halftime deficit. And look, Kim, how they flipped this thing in the second half. 
Uh, UCLA now up to 60% shooting. And to me, Kevin, it is, it's come from the defensive. And there has been a palpable uptick in defensive intensity. This is really the first time in the game. Hey, John Legend in the house with his adorable daughter. I got a, a fellow pen grad, love to see that. <laughs> yeah. We, we're told he is good friends with Kiki Rice and family, so he yeah. has to be loving what he's seeing from Kiki at the moment. Listen, last home game or last game for UCLA in this building. John Legend is here, Earl Watson, a couple of former John Wooden players and All-Americans. Jamal Wilkes was here the other day, and Myers in the building. So the UCLA stars are out. This is Dougal Each pounds it with the right hand. Wild layup. That's off of Ron's six fingertips. And shot clock does not reset. Seven seconds. Into the hands of Rice. She'll create once again. A couple of crossovers. Here's a step back three. Jensen got a piece of it. So that's a great defensive play by Lauren Jensen. And Creighton takes over with 2.31 to go in the third quarter. Now trailing by two. Well, UCLA keeping up the defensive intensity, putting on a full court press here. A little bit of a smaller, quicker lineup with Betts on the bench. And I was starting to say it there, but there has been a noticeable shift in intensity. And we go back to that word that Corey Coach said, number one most important thing, pressure. And this is the first time I've seen Creighton look a bit uncomfortable offensively. They're going to get Sontag for the foul. So that's the fifth foul on UCLA. Again, some of the... Some of the intangibles helping Creighton, the UCLA turnovers were problematic in that first half. And so this whistle now sends Creighton back to the free throw line where they've only taken three freebies, they're three of three, but they're automatic at the line. They're the best free throw shooting team in the nation. And Molly cans the first. And that's certainly something to keep in mind if you keep it close with Creighton and it comes down to free throw battle. I mean, they are literally number one in the country, better than 80% as a team. 14 points for Molly. It's a one-point game in Westwood. These two met six years ago in the round of 32. It was a blowout. Who's moving on to the Sweet 16 later tonight? Osborne trying to get going in this third quarter. Misfires, trying to chase it down. Got it. New 20. Rice, aggressive attack and draws the foul. And for a, a long period of time, Creighton had gotten much better on securing the first defensive rebound. But that's becoming a problem in this game again. Now 11 offensive rebounds for UCLA. 10 second chance points with a, a chance for two more here. Let's remind you the men's basketball championship continues Thursday with the Sweet 16. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on TBS and CBS. Go to NCAA.com for more. So the great women's squad, they are trying to join their counterparts in the other tournament, the great men's program now reaching back-to-back -back Sweet 16s, a program first. This Blue Jays team here in Westwood, we've underscored it many times, third straight NCAA tournament appearance. That's a record, so both programs continue to raise the ball. Lockett, wow, that's pure. Kiani Lockett with another basket. Now she has four, the sophomore from Minneapolis, not known for the scoring acumen, but these will help. Yeah, pretty clutch moment going deep into the shot clock. Big three, not able to get a touch, and a little float game is good. That's the cross-court feed to Hawkins. Inside of a minute now in the third quarter. This is Rice trying to put some more pressure on the Creighton defense. Gets the turnaround. Kiki Rice has started to come alive. It's another 20-point game. Back-to-back 20-point games for Rice. Ronsick falls on it. New 20 now for Creighton. Jensen open after the scramble. Yeah! Lauren Jensen cans another. 
and Creighton wants to stay smart. Maybe that first one from Morgan Molly a, a little bit quick in the shot clock, but able to corral that offensive rebound. And Jensen gets another look at it. She answers Rice. She has 20 of her own. We are knotted up at 56. 10 seconds to go on the third. Brown comes to set the screen. Jaquez dumps it into Betts. Couple of dribbles. Break comes over and takes it away. One second. Ronsick doesn't get it off. But the stop is a valuable one, Kim, because we are going to the fourth quarter. All knotted up at 56. A trip to the Sweet 16 on the line. All right, let's check out tonight's most reliable player. It's brought to you by Xfinity 13 in the quarter for Kiki Rice. Kiki Rice had 20 in the first round win. She has 20 here through three quarters. She's showing the entire offensive arsenal. She's five of 10 from the floor, has drained a couple of triples, but maybe the best at getting downhill. She's drawn five fouls. She's gotten to the line for eight attempts, and she has made all eight of them, and she has really fueled this comeback. 13 of her team's last 15 points. Kiki Rice plays with maturity way beyond her sophomore status. She's playing like a, a senior, a vet, a fifth year out there. She's put the team on her back. Went on a rampage there in that third quarter. She was the number two recruit in the class of 2022 is the crown jewel of this vaunted class of sophomores now still on this Bruins roster. Corey Close challenged her. Hey, just play free. Have you seen that today? We've seen it. She's she's loose. She's having fun. She's looking for her shots. And this is as good as it gets. All tied up. Sweet 16 trip on the line. 56 up in the round of 32. Creighton trying to force another steal. Osborne and then a bevy of Blue Jays were on the floor there. There's a tie up. And yeah, the possession arrow favors Creighton. Corey Close wanted maybe a foul. Now talk about one of the better coaches in America and has been doing it at a high level here in Westwood for many years. Close's 13th year as the head coach. This is her second number one overall recruiting class. Look at the players that she brought in a year ago. Now she had to wait one more go around to get Betts. Betts broke her heart, she told us. She was joking with us when she decided to choose Stanford over UCLA. Sparse minutes for Betts in her one season in the Bay Area, so she hits the portal. Close called her up immediately. Her visit to UCLA was the third of three after uh, South Carolina and Notre Dame, and Corey Close had to sweat it out there, but she ultimately said coming to play for the Bruins was the right fit at the right time. Ronsick off-balance jumper, rebounded by Rice. The Creighton offensive firepower has cooled off in the second half. Betts, relentless, gets fouled on the inside. That's another on Molly. And so when uh, when Betts, she was visiting with the team here, and again, Coach Close had everybody over. She announced the commitment at uh, dinner at Coach Close's house, and she said, listen, if you come to UCLA, I'm doing the cold plunge. <laughs> so she had to do it on the spot there. That was during Betts' recruiting visit this past spring after she transferred away from Stanford. It is Southern California, but Coach Close claims it was a, a chilly night. You saw the hoodies. <laughs> yeah. And she said, that is the only way I will jump in this pool fully closed is with a Lauren Betts commitment. UCLA back in front by two. The Bruins are trying to make it back-to-back -back appearances in the Sweet 16. Jensen off the screen, open from 15. Break, had it, lost it, and UCLA takes it. Official changed his call on the spot. And UCLA's gotten what they wanted on these last couple of defensive possession. They've gotten Creighton to take tough twos. They're not giving them open looks at the perimeter. They're not allowing them to slip and curl for easy layups. They've been taking contested, longer deep twos. 
50% overall, but they're just 35% shooting in this second half. That's enabled UCLA to erase a once 10-point deficit. And that work on the offensive and defensive glass is going a long way. They're plus 15, you just saw there, yeah, on the glass. Essentially doubling up Creighton. Wonderful battle in this round of 32 melee in Westwood. Jaquez is open. No, missed everything. And Bray comes down with the board, but she stumbled. So that's a travel. Now she's asking for a little bit of contact there as to why she fumbled to the ground. Nevertheless, it's UCLA ball. All of these possessions so critical. It's See what we see here. I, I thought she may have gotten it off right before that knee hitting the ground, but officials may have had a better look at it. Bets back out to Dougal. She can hit this. Another from deep. Creighton calls a timeout. UCLA is back in front by five with 8.13 to go in the fourth quarter. Creighton electing to send a strong double team to Lauren Betts. Beautiful dribble and pass out, and Dugalich drains it. UCLA up five. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? In a building that has housed a lot of champions, who will continue marching on in this championship in Westwood, UCLA, the two seed, its highest seed in program history with a five-point lead. So it's time to get more, brought to you by Geico. Jim, how about this duo of Lauren Betts and Kiki Rice, the all-conference pair, each have gone for 20 tonight. Well, after... UCLA's Pac-12 semifinal loss to USC, a double overtime loss. Corey Close wanted to get more balance from the inside out game. She wanted to get Lauren Betts more touches and they have certainly struck that balance today perfectly. 20 points for Betts, 20 points for Kiki Rice. Inside, outside damage, it's been tough to defend for Creighton. They've had to pick and choose how they want to favor certain matchups. And right now, UCLA is just playing extremely well out of double teams, and the perimeter game is picked up. Well, and in particularly on this end of the floor as well, they have held Creighton to just 33% shooting now in this second half. They were red hot for a while, particularly in the second quarter. Built a 10-point lead. That's gone. UCLA with a five-point edge. Two to shoot. Jensen has to realize it. Hoist it. Missed everything. And so more vexing defense by this Bruin team in crunch time. This is now multiple second half possessions where UCLA has defended a full 30 seconds, forced Creighton have to take it down to the ticking moments of the shot clock and force up a prayer. And you see the difference there, first half to second half for the big three being held to just 10 points for a 14 shooting. That all Big East trio has gone cold. Dougal each trying to take Motley off the bounce. Picks up the dribble. This is Rice. And an errant pass is knocked away. Creighton takes over. Creighton really needs one of those settle the team down buckets from one of their big three. Jensen trying to get free. Rice is all over her. It's another good defensive sequence. For UCLA, Ronsick, off-balance jumper, Dugalich secures it. Creighton can't even get off a clean pass right now because of how well the UCLA guards are defending the perimeter, denying passes. Jaquez lets it go, bounces out. I think Creighton needs to push a little bit more. They're having such a tough time in the half-court defense playing against that. They got to try to get some easy ones. Yeah! 
This is Molly, the high yorker. That three is offline. Great trying to save it. She does, but it rolls right to Betts. They are just stringing together stop after stop. Creighton's exerting a lot of energy on that end, running around trying to find an opening, but they simply can't get a clean one. The Blue Jays 0 of 5 from the field to start this fourth. Paquez draws the foul on Creighton with 5.56 to go in the fourth. That's the third team foul on the Blue Jays. That's the third on Mallory Break. Jim Flannery putting in Jamie Horan, taking out Mallory Break to force UCLA to have to play a little bit more honest defense. They're really playing off of Mallory Break. Jamie Horan can knock it down. Rice working off the screen, probes the baseline, puts it up and in. Turning in a fine second half, 15 of her 22 after halftime. This is UCLA's largest lead of the day. They're up seven. And at the most critical time, the five ball, and a half to go. The ball pressure, the denials, it is nonstop. Well, there's a clean look that you've been talking about. Creighton finally gets. That's their first field goal in this fourth quarter. And that's how you want to attack the overplay, the heavy denial. You want to try to get some backdoor cuts. Finally, a little bit of a deep breath for Creighton. Can they build upon it? Rice again, steps into the mid-range, that's good. Kiki Rice is surgical right now. The game is moving in slow motion. She's reading the defense. She knows where to take her shots. It's incredible to watch. 24 is one off her career high, so having one of her better offensive performances in this round of 32 battle. There's Jensen into the paint. That's a difficult shot, and Rice with the pressure. Rice now eyes up. She pulls it back out to initiate some stuff. 20 points in the first round victory over Cal Baptist. She's got 24 today to go along with six boards and three assists. They keep it in her hands. Rice with the left hand back out to Dugalich. Four seconds to shoot. That one's pinballed around. And so another careless pass leads to a Creighton takeaway. Haran. Inside of four minutes now in this second round matchup. Molly goes up with the left. Count it. And the foul. So Morgan Molly, the senior, has a chance to get it back to a three-point game here. Big bucket for Morgan Molly, staying aggressive. She loves this little back down fadeaway move. Not only gets the two, but gets a shot for three. This free throw, rather, would get it back to a four point game. So 18 points for Morgan Molly, the senior from Crete, Nebraska, grew up about an hour and 15 from Omaha. Mm. Now with 1,500 career points, though she misses a critical one at the line. 90% free throw shooter. She's missed twice today at the strike. Still a five-point game at Westwood. Winner advances to face LSU in the Sweet 16 next weekend. Osborne peels back out. This is Jaquez now. Drive and kick into Rice's hands. Has to hoist it up with two. Way off. This is everything, and Creighton takes over with 3.20 to play. That was something UCLA worked on a lot in shoot around today was taking the possession deep into the shot clock and still getting a good look. So that time didn't quite get what Corey Close was hoping for. Every possession so critical against a Creighton team that can light it up from three. It's been a tense one in Southern California, but the home team has the five point edge. Townsend works off the screen, runs it, free for a moment. This is the three. And Hawkins down with another rebound. So that's her 11. She's got another double-double. She has been everywhere, just flying around. And now UCLA playing a little time and score here. Not looking to push, looking to take the clock down. 
I take it back. She's two points away. Here she's got eight. This will give her the cover double. This fires from deep. And so the door is open for Creighton again. Two and a half to play. And Jim Flannery's asking for the timeout, so he uses one here. It's a second to last timeout with two and a half to go. UCLA by five. They have been fueled by their all-conference engine. That's Kiki Rice. She is tonight's Capital One rewarding performance. Yeah, we know just how good Kiki Rice is, but this may be the, the brightest. Her star has shined on a big stage here. So much on the line. And she has risen to the occasion time and time again, looking for her shots. Versatility in the offense, 24 points. Perfect from the free throw line. Six rebounds, a couple of assists. Kiki Rice looking like a vet out there. She is so driven. But this whole team, can we, we've watched it in practice these last couple days. They are so committed to the process and the prep, Rice in particular. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Coach Close told us she writes in her journal every day, final four. And Coach Close says, you know, that's different for every player. I like to stay more in the moment, but Kiki Rice certainly has big aspirations for herself and her team, more importantly. They survived the gauntlet that was the Pac-12. They won 13 games, finished second. Second time they finished second place in the league in the Corey Close era. And there's a foul on Osborne. Flannery was waiting for that whistle. He thought it was a half a beat late. Regardless, that's the third team foul and the fourth on the next level senior. That's Charisma Osborne. Yeah, it's been a tough night for her. Just has never really been able to get into a rhythm. Just three points. She was so big in the first round win. The previous foul is under review for a potential upgrade. So our officials are at the replay review monitor over there, and so I would think they're just going to take it, take a look at whether or not there was contact to the head or neck area. Yeah, I want. Well, they played the replay in the arena, and the UCLA crowd went crazy. So I wonder if they're looking at something on Creighton. We're about to find out for ourselves. It looked like a flop, honestly. I, I don't even think a foul was really there. That, that's a flop to me. <laughs> it was called, I, that was, a foul was called on Osborne. They're, unless they're looking at something else, there's certainly nothing to be upgraded there. I, I think that was an incorrect foul call. It's a tough fourth on Charisma Osborne. You know, I, let's bring unless, Maybe from that angle, we saw a little bit to the face. I, I want to bring in Lisa Mattingly here because, Lisa, we know in the women's game you have the faking being fouled call. It's, it's not called a flop on the women's side. It's called faking being fouled. Can they actually, you know, can they adjudicate that here, our officials at the monitor? Uh, yes, actually, if they get to the monitor and determine that there was no contact on that play, they can. Uh, and then they can also give a issue a warning for faking being fouled. So uh, we'll see what they come away with here. Uh, I, from the angle that I saw, I don't see anything that would warrant an intentional foul or any kind of upgrade for sure. Yeah. And so if, if nothing is added on here, it's just the third team foul on UCLA. After review, the call of common foul on the floor is confirmed. It did not rise to the level of an intentional foul. And so we appreciate Lisa's insight there. Women's Basketball Hall of Famer, coordinator of officials for several conferences. So Creighton here keeps it with a new shot clock, 2.17 to go on the fourth. Yeah, I, I still think that's a tough fourth on and Charisma. And if I, I'm correct, I don't yeah. think you, you couldn't take the foul away from Charisma. But either way, that's a, that's a tough fourth on her. Osborne stays out there with 2.12 to go. Winner moving on to face LSU in the Sweet 16. The loser season is over. Mogensen buries a three. Molly Mogensen with a critical triple, her first of the night. I was looking at that mismatch develop. Again, you pull out 6-7 to the perimeter. Solid jab step to get a little space. Molly Mogensen cashes it. One possession game. UCLA trailed eight at the break. Took a five-point lead earlier, and it's back to a two-point game. And so Corey Close uses one of her timeouts. She has two left with 1.37 to go. 
So you see, Creighton has one timeout left. UCLA has two. Neither team is in the bonus just yet. That possession arrow favors UCLA with 1.37 to go in this decisive fourth quarter. One last chance to remind you, it's been four years running now. Every NCAA Women's Championship game is on our ESPN family of networks. For more information on tip times and matchups, go to NCAA.com. Who will be in Cleveland's April 5th and 7th for the Final Four? You see the National Championship game on ABC, Sunday, April 7th. Jim Flannery saying they were so close a couple of years ago, made that run to the Elite Eight, the deepest run in program history, knocking out Caitlin Clark and the Hawkeyes in the round of 32. They had a 10-point lead in this second round battle in Westwood. They lost it, however, they're back within two. Let's see if they try to get it into bets here. Just 10 seconds, sideline out of bounds. Mismatch. Osborne in the paint, the runner is good. UCLA back in front by four. And we talked about this has not been her, her greatest night offensively. Just got her fourth foul, but comes up with a big two. Jensen can't get open, so Lockett starts to create. Lockett picks up the dribble, 10 to shoot. Here's Jensen. One of the premier scorers drives, goes up with the right, too far underneath, and hit the bottom of the backboard. Inside of a minute now. 50 seconds to go. So if you're Creighton, you can certainly afford to play this one out. You need the stop. And they still have the foul to give, but they are going to play this one straight up here. Two possession game. Rice went on a rampage this second half. Gives it to Osborne for to shoot. Osborne got it blocked. Boganson gathers it. Creighton on the move. 25 seconds. Gotta, gotta get quickly, something yep. in a hurry. They're down two possessions. Jensen with 19. Down to Molly. And Flannery uses the timeout with 16.7. That's his final timeout with his team down two scores with 16.7 to go. And he's confirming to the officials where they're going to get it, which looks like it'll be a baseline out of bounds as we look back at this clutch bucket from Charisma Osborne as the shot clock was winding down, just stays with it, fights through the defense. Just her fifth point of the night, but that is why Charisma Osborne came back to this university for a fifth year, putting off the WNBA draft to try to push her team to a sweet 16 and beyond. The winner of this one faces the defending national champs that blew by Middle Tennessee State in the final 13 minutes of that game yesterday. Who is marching on to the Sweet 16, this part of the Albany 2 Regional, next weekend. Iowa holds off West Virginia. It'll face Colorado. And so we await the final piece to the puzzle, if you will. Remember, the Bruins were down 10 in the third quarter. Stormed all the way back at one point had a seven point lead earlier in this fourth quarter. Creighton though did not go away and so these Blue Jays, they've got it with 16.7 to go but they gotta work quickly here and get a good look. Typically very good out of timeouts. Let's see if they try to get a switch and a mismatch like they have done all, all game. Lock it, heaves it out to Molly. Molly guarded by Dugalich. Dugalich with some tight defense over to Jensen. 10 seconds, Jensen leaves it short. Bogenson got it, six seconds, blocked by Tugelich. It's a tie-up, possession arrow favors UCLA, and the Bruins take it with 3.6 to go. Tugelich with a clutch block. Even before the block, it was incredibly well defended. Creighton trying to get the ball in the hands of Morgan Molly, forced up a, a tough three, and then who's right in the middle of it? Charisma Osborne. Coach Close to us. Jump ball. We are going to look for any unobserved illegal upgraded foul. Coach Close.
talk to us about passion plays and they try to get 75 of those per game. I would say that's got to be one high up on the list. Let's take a look. The official said they're going to look for a, something potentially upgraded, like maybe an elbow swing from Charisma Osborne. You know, if you're Osborne, I think Osborne's just being physical with the ball there. I don't see anything that would necessarily warrant an upgrade. She's got three Blue Jays draped yeah, all over her. I don't know what else she could really do as she tries to maintain possession of the ball, battling three defenders. I think that was what they might look at is, was it a basketball play? They're looking at, is it excessive? I don't think it was. I think it's a basketball motion, just trying to keep possession, trying to wrangle off three defenders. I think she might get a couple of passion points, maybe two in that situation. <laughs> That's worth a bit more than just one. They're weighted differently down the stretch. I, I, the story of this second half, if you will, UCLA's defense, they locked in for much of this fourth quarter. It's been incredible. They have completely forced Creighton out of feeling comfortable, out of feeling in a rhythm. Let's see if we get the official explanation here. We didn't get the microphone uh, oh, Corey explanation. Close just, she just called a timeout. So, and with that, it appears that UCLA is going to keep possession. Let's get the final assessment. After review, there is no unsportsmanlike activity to be penalized. UCLA has called timeout and will advance the ball. So there it is. It's the tie up. It's the possession arrow critical. It favored UCLA there. Osborne, the fifth year senior, the next level player from Moreno Valley, California, is the one who got her hands on it. And UCLA really just needs some clean inbounds here. It's still a two possession game, and Creighton only has three fouls. So Creighton. Obviously going to try for a quick steal here, but that the first foul won't even send UCLA to the free throw line. Time is just not on the Blue Jays side. Do the leech. I make it Sontag part to inbound. Couple seconds come off. Rice gets fouled. So rather it was about nine tenths of a second that came off. And again, Creighton has to foul one more time just to send them to the line. Even if a Bruins player makes them both, it still remains a two possession game, but you're gonna be inside of two seconds at that point if you're Creighton. Kiki Rice, eight of eight from the line, try to get the ball in her hands. So Rice, two seconds, Creighton doesn't foul, game over. UCLA headed back to the Sweet 16 after erasing a double digit second half deficit. They store back, and it's now back-to-back -back Sweet 16 appearances for the Bruins. What an impressive second half, specifically for UCLA. The defensive end of the floor completely changed. Huge game from Kiki Rice. Lauren Betts was huge as well. 20 points in her tournament debut. Final, UCLA 67, Creighton 63. Hope you enjoyed it. We did for Kim Adams and our entire great crew. I'm Kevin Fitzgerald saying so long from Westwood. Let's get you out to Spokane now. Utah Gonzaga coming up.